Hey there everyone, this is AJ coming to you from the 2021 Formula One British Grand Prix at Silverstone. This is my fourth British Grand Prix where I've attended as a general admission guest and I've decided to make this walk around video tour as a guide to help anyone who is planning on attending or hoping to attend in the future to sort of show them around and what to expect on the day of the race. This is more of a tour for the general admission tickets because the first time I attended I was worried about not knowing where to go or what to expect. So hopefully this guide will help you prepare a bit better. I have always preferred the general admission ticket to have the freedom to see the different areas such as some straights and some corners and move around to experience the different feels of the track. Also, if you're thinking about purchasing tickets for assigned seats in the grandstand, I've tried to show angles of the track from each main area so you can get an idea of what your view will be like on the day. Feel free to look below for the timestamps in the description so that you can skip to the relevant areas you're interested in and not have to watch the entire video. I did a bit of narration on the day of the race, but unfortunately I didn't bring a mic with me and I had to rely on the mic on the GoPro and on my phone, which didn't turn out very well, so for the most part I'll have to dub over this video. I will also include some clips of this race that I was able to film, including the crowd reaction to the infamous Hamilton and Verstappen incident on lap 1. Unfortunately, I was at the start line for the start of the race and not at the actual scene of the accident, but still managed to see it on the screens and hear the crowd reaction around me. Feel free to put any questions or tips in the below comments and I'll try to answer what I can. I also would appreciate any feedback or thoughts. I hope this video is able to help a few people out there prepare for their day at Silverstone or at least be a bit entertaining. Otherwise, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoy, and we will see you there next year. We left Sunday morning at 7am from London Victoria Station for about a 9.30 arrival at the circuit. There are many ways to get there, but today I chose to take the Megabus for ease. The Megabus is a relatively easy way to get you to the circuit so you don't have to worry about traffic and parking, etc. A day trip from London is more than doable. Once you get here, you just follow the signs and go through security, and then you're in the gates before 10am. You'll see in the videos that it's already quite packed with people setting up their chairs and claiming their viewing spots probably days in advance. No worries though, you can always find some place to stand and watch at just about every area. Generally, throughout the race, I'll move around and watch a few laps from each of my favorite areas. We will start our tour at the start finish straight, which is now called the Hamilton Straight, for obvious reasons. You can see the track is clockwise, however for some reason I started walking backwards around the track, so the tour will be in reverse as I make my way around the track. There are some good views here for the general admission tickets, with guests able to stand right near the finish line and get a good view of the straight. I like to be here for the race start, which you can see here. I've also included my point of view of the Hamilton and Verstappen incident, which could turn out to be a major decider in this year's championships. People watching in the future, please let me know how it turned out. Another thing I'd recommend is that when you pick your preferred spot, you want to ensure there's a video screen nearby for you to watch the action as we have just seen here. It helps you keep track of what's going on later in the race when everyone starts to spread out and lets you see the main action and fights during the race on screen as you would watching it at home. We will now make our way around the track anti-clockwise, walking back past Club Corner. You can see that we are now in the area of turns 16, 17, and 18, which is the Vale Chicane area leading up to the final corner, Club Corner. This area offers a large general viewing area as you can see here in the video. It is elevated a bit so you can get some good views of the cars making their way around the final part of the circuit. It is already quite full here in the morning but you can easily find a place to stand and watch during the race without having to camp here all weekend. As you can see here, I start walking backwards towards Stoll Corner which also gives some great views of some overtakes coming down the hangar straight. 
If you look up to the right, you'll see that there are lots of grandstands that are quite elevated and offer you a view of the entire area from Stowe to Club, so it might be a good option for you as well. We now arrive at Stowe, which you can see is the corner at the end of the hangar straight, on which the cars will reach their top speed of the race. This allows for some nice overtaking opportunities into Stowe, and you'll get to see a lot of the action if you pick a spot here. We now make our way around Stowe and onto the hangar straight. As you round the corner, you'll walk past the helicopter pads, which have constant flights in and out on the day of the race for the guests who don't particularly like the traffic and are probably more well off than the likes of me who rode on the bus to the circuit. If you have the means, I highly recommend arriving by air. We then get onto the hangar straight, which doesn't appear to be that long when watching the race on TV, but it is actually 770 meters long, so give yourself some time to make your way down the straight. This does mean, however, that you'll always be able to find a spot if high-speed passes are your thing. You can see this footage is of that morning's F2 race. After the long walk down the straight, we arrive at Chapel. You can see here it's already quite busy, but you can get a nice view of the cars as they come out of Maggots and Beckets and make their way onto the straight. The general seating area wraps all the way around this corner and actually in front of those grandstands over there on the other side of the corner, which you can see here. Either way you choose, you get a good view here with more grandstand options to my right in this video. Next up, we have the challenging combination of sweeping corners that is Maggots and Beckets. Here is a great opportunity to be right next to the track and see some great action as the cars make their way around these corners at a minimum speed of 130 miles per hour. You can see here just how close you can get to the side of the track, and this was just from me walking up during the middle of the race and standing here. No camping necessary. Next up around the track is Cops Corner, which is a long and fast right-hander which really shows the impressive downforce of the modern Formula One car. To me it's not that great of a view during the race, however it was the location of the Hamilton and Verstappen shunt we've already mentioned, and could have been the most pivotal moment in the recent hybrid era. But you know, I'm not really going to go into it because the fact of the matter is, oh look, we have a replay right here. You judge for yourself. Hey, 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 hey. Crash revels every day. Okay, okay, back to the super serious tour we're doing here. Moving backwards along the circuit, we will next make our way down the National Pit Strait, which is similar in views to any of the other straits, but in my opinion is not as good of a view as it's not really elevated and you sit on the hot tarmac all day. If you do decide you'd like to sit here, there are screens here and plenty of places to sit. Here is some race footage from the National Pit Strait. I consider this area and Turn 8 Woodcott to be very similar with some decent grandstand seating available, but we'll move it right along. Next up is turn 7, the right-handed hairpin of Luffield. This is a technical and slow speed corner which the drivers must take perfectly to get a good exit and then maximize their speed down the national pit straight. You can see here there's plenty of people here who brought their chairs to get a good view for the weekend, however you can see how easy it is for me to just pop up behind the fence during the race and get a great view. From this area you'll also get a bit of a view of the cars as they break down the Wellington Strait and into the previous corner, Brooklands, before reaching Luffield. There are good views here if you like to see the cars come around slowly. It's sort of relaxing. We then leave Luffield and walk backwards towards turn 6, Brooklands, which is at the end of the Wellington Strait. In this nook here is also the location of the main stage where there are many events throughout the weekend, as well as a massive food court area offering several food choices. You get some good action coming down the straight and into this corner, as you can see here during the early morning 1960s GT race. If you get right into the corner, you get to see the cars wrap all the way around you, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 
Walking down the Wellington Strait, we see that there are a few places to stand and an elevated viewing area here, but we can quickly move on to the next main viewing area, which is a quick succession of three corners, corner three, four, and five, leading up to the Strait, which are Village, The Loop, and Aintree. There's a nice general admission viewing spot all along this area, as well as plenty of grandstand seating, which offer you plenty of action, both fast and slow. One pro tip I have for you guys here that can save you lots of time is that if you walk down the track back towards turn two, as if you're trying to get around the track as I'm trying to do here, you will meet a dead end. There are places to view down here as you can see, but it is not a thoroughfare. You will have to turn around and go all the way back out and around, which I have tried to illustrate on the satellite image. Now this might not be a huge issue during the weekend if you're walking around and exploring, but if you're walking during the race, you could very well miss 20 minutes or so of the action trying to get out of this area, as it's a long way back around. To go the correct way, you need to head back down the Wellington Strait through the pedestrian tunnel and towards the Ferris wheel, where you can then take a left and head back to the main strait. If you follow these previous directions, you arrive at our final spot of the tour, which is the first corner, Abbey, which is at the end of the Hamilton start and finish straight, where we began the tour. The general seating area and grandstands stretch all the way down the straight, as we showed you in the beginning of the tour. But here's some footage of the race restart after the red flags on the opening lap. This is viewed from the end of the straight, looking into corners one and two. and some more action as they come back around with Leclerc leading. And that's about it for the seat guide and tour of the track here at Silverstone for the 2021 British Formula One Grand Prix. After the race is finished, you used to be able to get out on the track and push all the way up to the podium to see the celebrations up close, but for some reason they didn't allow that this year. In the future, if this is something you'd like to do, near the race end you want to be near the beginning of the start and finish straight, where you can see I'm standing for the last three laps as Hamilton reels Leclerc in to, spoiler alert, eventually take the lead and the win. Here's a view of the podium celebration from the best view that I could manage. Just a bit of additional information for you about the race weekend is that throughout the weekend there are many other things for you to do at the track to keep you busy which I have included some clips of the various things here. There are quite a few merchandise stores, both the official F1 stores as well as the individual team stores that are great to see. Some of the teams also bring some displays which you can see here such as the Golf livery McLaren that was used at Monaco this year as well as some historic Mercedes cars and probably a few others I missed. This year they had unveiled the new 2022 car the week prior, so to see the first one on display was also pretty neat. There are also games and events to try as seen here, where they had esports racing and a pit stop challenge for you to try. There are many other on and off track events such as various other races and F2 racing, concerts, interviews, track parades, etc. Plenty to keep you busy if you decide to show up early like I did or even spend the whole weekend here. Silverstone is definitely worth a visit and worth the experience and I will continue to keep coming back here. Even though it's one of the more pricey F1 weekends I've been lucky enough to experience, a visit to the historic track is well worth the price. As I just roll some additional footage I took here, I thought I'd take the time to remind you to come prepared, as a day can quickly get uncomfortable if you don't have the right equipment. Just a refresher, I'll list a few things that you need to remember to bring here. Phone and additional battery pack, camera and batteries, an umbrella, whether it's raining or sunny out, you might want it, sunscreen, walking shoes, water, food, and snacks, yes, you can bring your own in, a backpack, a chair if you want to sit, a hat, sunglasses, earplugs, don't forget your ticket, cards, and maybe some cash just in case, 
and anything else that you might want. After the podium is done, there are further events at the track going on into the night, such as concerts and an after party, which I have never attended as it makes for a really long day, but many people like to stay to avoid the traffic. Transport back is pretty easy, you just head out into the car parks where the buses are located, I believe it was through gate 19, and you can get to a few major cities quite easily. You can pre-book a bus or you can just pay when you get on. For the route home, I took the 30 minute bus to Milton Keynes and then got a fast train to London Euston. I was then able to get back to London Victoria where we started the day by 8pm. So there you have it, a Silverstone British Grand Prix day trip and we got to see all the action. Comment below if you have any specific questions and I'll try to get answers to them. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope to see you there for many years to come. AJ out.